What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to explain to you what Ecolength exhausts actually mean on the BMW M3, M4 and the BMW M2. So uh, this principle goes for both the F80 platform and the G80 platform. It's a straight six. The, uh, there's a difference in length of the exhaust. It's a twin turbocharged engine, so it has a, um, has a turbocharger for the first three cylinders, one, two, three, and it has a turbocharger for the second bank of three cylinders, so from four to six. And because the uh, banks sit behind each other, the exhaust lengths from the first bank and the second bank, uh, the exhaust length of those two are different. So we have the downpipes and the equal length section from a BMW M2 G87 over here. And if you go to the downpipes, we will explain to you why the equal length principle will work on these cars. So we of course do not have the engine right over here, but we can uh, explain to you by sketching an image of how the engine should look like. So the S58 engine sits around here. I'm standing now at the passenger side of the vehicle from left-hand drive vehicles. And right here, there's a turbocharger that connects to this downpipe and here, there's a turbocharger that connects to this downpipe. These turbochargers are separated in two cylinder banks, so three cylinders for each. So it's actually the length between this downpipe and this downpipe that we need to compensate in the exhaust uh, right behind it. And there are many, many exhausts that work for these cars. Of course, you can use the uh, original BMW principle, which splits into two exhaust banks, and then the exhaust pulses will, of course, mix somewhere down the line. Um, we have chosen for a different principle because we wanted to save a little bit of weight and we also want to keep the principle a little bit more simple. So before we do that, we need to explain to you why BMW chose for a exhaust, or that at least that's what we think, uh, chose for exhaust that splits into two banks, uh, two exhaust pipes to the back. So this is still a two exhaust pipe principle, but it's different compared to the uh, principle that BMW uses on the G80. So, when the S58 was first introduced on the BMW X4M, for example, um, it had this similar exhaust setup like we have over here. BMW split that up into two pipes, so left bank and right bank, and the left pipe passes the gearbox on the left, and the right pipe passes the gearbox on the right. They've done that because they had to uh, for emission regulations, probably. So um, on the first generation X4M, they had the two pipes like this, close to each other, and they changed that principle along the line. So the X4M and the X3M LCIs are different uh, from the ones from pre-LCI versions. So for the F80 example, the car already had secondary cats. Those secondary cats were sitting around just be beyond the bend. So in terms of packaging reasons, the secondary cats were, uh, were perfectly fine sitting where they were. And the same goes to the X4M. So the X3M and X4M, in Europe at least, had uh, OPS from the beginning. So that model is from 2018, 2019, I think, and um, OPS were mandatory at that time. But the European regulations did ask for cleaner exhaust. So they added two more secondary cats on top of the uh, downpipes, which were also catalytic converters, and the OPS. Those secondary cats are now split into two pipes, and the main reason is of, course, is, of course, that you cannot package them with two pipes close to each other. So long story short, we changed the design from BMW. And uh, you may think, why? Because BMW, of course, thought about that. Um, of course, they thought about it, but it also had to do with packaging reasons. And since we do not have secondary cats on this exhaust pipe anymore, we could ditch the left pipe and go for a double pipe like this, just like when it was on the X4M, the X3M, pre-LCIs, or the F80, F82 generation. Um, also making the exhaust a little bit lighter and a little bit less complex because it has less bends to go through. So this is the exhaust pipe that we are talking about. Um, we already explained to you the difference in length. So this is the left pipe and this is the right pipe. This is the pipe that compensates for the uh, length in the shorter down pipe. And that's why you have these bands over here. There's a small difference in between the length of these two pipes, but that has a reason. So why do we call it equal length when there's a difference between this pipe and this pipe then? Well, exhaust pulses are of course not static. If you take the center line of this exhaust, then you're right, there's a little bit of difference between the left bank and the right bank. Uh, but at the point where they mix under load, 
the actual flow of the exhaust does mix at the same time. And the reason for that is because exhaust does not follow the center line. This is not the case. Exhaust flow will bounce in between the corners. So you would say, why would you do that? Why would you make the pipe that has the bends actually longer than the one on this side? That has to do with flow dynamics. So even though this pipe is a little bit longer, in the end, when they mix here with exhaust pressure on the exhaust, the actual uh, length traveled in the exhaust is the same. And that is because exhaust flow will not travel through the center line of this exhaust. Exhaust gases bounces in the uh, curves into the exhaust and uh, once the pressure starts to build up, the exhaust will flow will of course find the shortest way in the exhaust pipes. So we had to make the exhaust length on the uh, left pipe a little bit longer than the one on the right side to make sure when you have the exhaust under pressure that the exhaust flow will meet at the same time. So here you can see the exhaust from above and this is the one that uh, compensates for the uh, shorter length on this side and this is the side that's actually a little bit longer compared to the one on this side. And it's quite simple. This pipe, when you push exhaust flow through, the exhaust flow will actually follow the center line of this exhaust quite well because there's not many bends inside of this pipe. So even though this pipe is a little bit short compared to this side, um, the meeting point right over here in the X pipe is at the same time. And that is because when we push the exhaust under pressure, the flow will start to bounce against these walls, travel through these bends, finding the shortest way, and then bouncing back and forth to meet at the X pipe over there. So it is actually quite easy to explain. We have the exhaust, short exhaust over here, the long exhaust over there. So if we follow this exhaust along, this side is actually the shorter one, but keep in mind, this side is the now longer one compared to the other side. If you go back to the front and you follow this, this side of the exhaust, you see that in the exhaust, there are not many points that causes the exhaust to bounce around, um, which means the back pressure on this side is also a little bit lower. If you push the exhaust flow from here, it will bounce in this curve and then follow this curve back and go straight through the uh, pipes to the X pipe. Of course, we also have resonated versions if you want, by the way, that's also possible. Um, if you go to the shorter downpipe over here, if you, um, <coughs> if, you are, if you are on full throttle, the exhaust flow will follow this pipe over here. It will start to bounce in this corner, see that? And when it starts to reach this point, it, was, it will of course bounce back into this curve and it will start to follow the shortest way through these curves. So it will start to bounce back over here, follow back over here, and then it will go through the uh, bent part to the straight part and then mix over here. So even though the center line over here is a little bit longer compared to that, to that side, this side is actually compensating for the back pressure uh, needed to create the equal length sound. So in theory, you would say, yeah, but this side is not, not correct, so it's uh, too long. Um, yes, but in the end, when they start to mix here, you will see that this is the equal length section that creates a true equal length sound. So we, if we measure the long pipe, the actual mixing point is 237 centimeters long. And on the shorter pipe, it's actually 243 centimeter long. But under pressure, they are both 237. If you have any questions in regards to or, uh, eco length for single mid pipe exhaust, comment down below. We will respond. We will make sure that you get a reaction from us. And of course, if you want a technical explanation about our exhaust, feel free to email us or WhatsApp us. And we will, of course, respond there as well. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. And see you on the next video.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 